the first speaker is going to be by Dr. Smada Moshel. Dr. Smadal Moshel from the Hebrew University, who actually wrote the review of the early of early childhood, including zero to six years of age, birth to six. Where is my presentation? Thank you very much, and thank you, Noah, for the introduction. That saves me some of the time, and I won't be able, I think, to a, to remain within the time allocated to me. Thank you, uh, first of all, to Dr. Adiefer, who's uh, uh, actually accompanied the writing process from very close. She read, she uh, made comments, and she was involved a, l a lot more than she was expected to be involved, and. Uh, well, this review uh, treats the Israeli policy out of a, a, com a comparative uh, perspective. I think that today it people recognize the importance, uh, almost everybody that is being asked, uh, policy make makers, researchers, practitioners, um, recognize the importance of early childhood education. But uh, what I would like to say here is to delve uh, deeper into the details and to present to you the dilemmas and the tensions uh, behind this uh, general statement that everybody agrees to concerning the importance of investment in, the early, in early childhood. The uh, structure of the review uh, that I'm going to uh, uh, to um, talk about today is divided into three uh, parts. The first is the review of literature that analyzes uh, the main research in this uh, domain, and actually the findings from the from the research study that show which policy has been proven as more effective and less effective. And uh, the two other parts actually relate to uh, the Israeli case, uh, separating between the birth to three years of age and three to six years of age, those two groups. I assume that whoever s sits here n knows the structural separation of these uh, two age groups, and that is why it is very difficult to speak about early childhood or early childhood education as a monolithic unit here in Israel. There are a few uh, insights that when you look at the policy, uh, generally uh, we uh, can raise them, and that is some, something I would like to try to do today. More specifically, um, we'll try to look at the policy in Israel through uh, two main prisms. The first prism is the tension between accessibility of uh, serv educational services to the young, uh, to the early childhood, and the quality of those services. When I'm talking about accessibility, I'm go I, I will I mean the availability, how many daycare centers, how many um, uh, kindergartens, which percentage of the children uh, really takes part in these uh, these educational settings and another group of parameters relates to the quality. And here we uh, distinguish between structural quality, which is actually the first parameters that we use, uh, uh, that we uh, can measure. They are most easily uh, measured, the number of children in a group, the relationship between the carer, the number of carers or caregivers and the number of children, the training of the educational staff, the professional development of this staff on the one hand, and on the other hand, a more uh, process-based uh, quality, which is much uh, 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 much difficult to measure, and uh, there is less uh, research about it, but the research is very important. I'm, uh, it is very important to remember that uh, the interaction between the uh, uh, caregivers uh, team and the children, uh, their ability to be responsive to the needs of the child. And here I mean uh, uh, also infants that can't express themselves and the older children, the type of questions asked. Uh, do they, uh, does the staff ask uh, the children open questions? For example, what do you think about 
X, would you react to what uh, somebody else has said, or only closed questions with only yes or no as an answer? How does the, sta the uh, staff respond to a certain statement uttered by the child or a certain drawing he or she has made? These are more delicate. Uh, it's much uh, more difficult to evaluate the language if it's rich or less rich, and but the, and it is very significant for the quality of education. It is important for me to note it right now because the uh, research is uh, meager and the comparative uh, data about Israel are less available. And this is something uh, that we have to develop more info more knowledge about. Uh, and I will try to intertwine a reference uh, to the um, to the literature survey in order to understand where we are in relation to the um, information, to the data that is known for us, uh, that is known by us today. Uh, I will also note that in previous presentations in, uh, in a, a similar forums, I focused on certain issues and today I'll try to go very briefly about them. If there are questions about this age group, I will be more than delighted to answer them. As for the accessibility to educational set settings uh, of, uh, uh, for children zero to, uh, zero to three, Israel is almost the last one here. The accessibility or the percentage of children participating in recognized educational settings in Israel has almost not changed changed since the end of the, 18, nine, of the 1980s. In the 70s and 80s, we were leaders in many parameters of quality and accessibility uh, as compared to other countries. Uh, at the end of the 80s, Israel was third after Sweden and Denmark, those socio-democratic socio countries, in terms of the percentage of children participating in, uh, in recognized settings. And Israel was not, a, a part, was not a part of the general trend in the developed countries of increasing the number of uh, uh, participants in those settings. Let me just note that some of the changes that took place in the other countries that today are uh, in, in front of us in terms of the percentage of children in these settings are legislative uh, changes. Uh, uh, the uh, settings led to this change in legislation which uh, imposed licensing on all settings and lo and behold, the children went into this group. Israel has not managed, despite many attempts, uh, to pass such legislation and that is why we can see that we uh, were treading in one stop in one uh, spot, as such changes would take us to the uh, to the upper third of accessibility if all the um, se educational settings had been recognized and supervised. Another aspect uh, of uh, accessibility is the number of hours people, uh, uh, children, uh, as, uh, stay in these settings uh, in the preschool years. Uh, we can see that Israel leads the table in terms of the number of, the, of hours children stay in the settings from birth to three years of age. There are cultural norms. What's customary? It's customary that the mother goes back to work after three uh, months or um, maybe... <coughs> The, uh, occu the occupation structure is or, or is based on a on one breadwinner. There are many cultural uh, uh, cultural uh, trends, but still the gap here is very significant. A little bit about quality in those uh, settings. What we can see here is, uh, in fact, uh, changes of this uh, in the standards or uh, along those years. The two. Sorry, she has to speak into the mic. Uh, from uh, 1987 to 2009. These are the recommendations of a committee headed by Professor Miriam Rosenthal, and these recommendations were not applied, were not implemented. Knowledge about the, uh, the structural uh, variables was with us many decades ago, but uh, uh, what we can see here is that the standard today is less good both as compared to the OECD countries and 
uh, what and uh, also in terms of this uh, rec recommended standards we're almost two times more in terms of the size of the group between the uh, what's recommended and what's uh, the the uh, what's real in Israel, in this tension between accessibility and quality, we have to note also that the changes in the regulation, which st started in 1965, uh, to two caregivers for <coughs> ten babies. Today, uh, these changes uh, took place because of pressures exerted in the 1980s, the rampant uh, inflation, the uh, the uh, prices of the daycare centers went up and the solution of the policy makers and the parents was to increase the number of children in a group without changing the number of caregivers. So accessibility to the services and were preferred over their quality. <coughs> in the kindergartens, Israel holds a very reasonable uh, place uh, around the end of the third, first uh, third of the table, and we are, we have adopted the general trend of increasing the percentage of uh, children in preschool education settings. On, but in terms of the number of hours, we are uh, high, so accessibility is very uh, powerful here, and Israel is in green. <coughs> the median of the OECD is in red, so we are far uh, in front of this median of the OECD countries, and it would be interesting to see where Sweden, Finland are in terms of the accessibility and the hours, and you can see it here. They are in the lower part, and this is, uh, this is something that it would that needs some thinking, these uh, uh, pr uh, pr uh, differences of policy between the different countries. When you talk about the, the quality of the preschool education, what we can see here is in fact that in terms of the, of the ratio between the kindergarten teacher, uh, the a trained uh, um, kindergarten teacher with an academic degree to the number of children, Israel is leading in terms of the ra uh, ratio <coughs> between the number of kindergartens and uh, teacher kindergarten teachers and the the, <coughs> the number of children per kindergarten teacher sorry i can't hear the interpolations without a mic in a minute i'm going to speak about the reform of the second uh, uh, aid or assistant to the ki to a kindergarten teacher uh, as for quality in the kind in the kindergartens is the number of uh, children in each kindergarten and here we can see again that in Israel uh, uh, in the birth to three group and the three to six group Israel leads in terms of the uh, size of the groups it would be interesting to <coughs> zoom in to a reform such as the what's called Ofek Hadash, New Horizon. This was main. This had mainly with uh, dealt mainly with wage agreements in order to have new wage agreements between between education workers and uh, uh, other people. And the kindergarten teachers were included in this package. So this reform, in this reform, uh, they added some aspects, the ministry has added some aspects that do not have to do only with changes in the wage or the salary. Two significant changes in the wake of the reform. The first one is the decision to extend the uh, day, uh, the kindergarten school by 40 minutes a day. Up to the reform, they, fini they finished uh, at uh, 1 uh, 20 and now it's uh, 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 they, they uh, finish giving their services at 2 p.m. under the assumption that these 40 minutes would enable individual work by the kindergarten garden teacher with the k uh, children, work in small groups, etc. What we can see here from this example 
is that in terms of the policy makers in Israel, there is a connection between accessibility, the uh, uh, time frame, and quality. We are going to increase the accessibility, increase the number of hours, and then the quality is going to go up. Uh, the settings uh, would be more individual and more personal. And um, I think that this, uh, we can think about this again. Another point, another uh, significant change uh, in the wake of the reform is that actually from uh, now on, all kindergarten teachers have to have an academic degree. In other words, there is here a certain attempt to improve the structural uh, quality of the system. The state controller's uh, report that examined uh, the implementation of uh, New Horizon and uh, uh, and uh, uh, it was based on the Rama evaluative uh, uh, study, uh, argued about the extension of the study day as a means to improve the co to improve quality. So the state controller said, <coughs> as for the cognitive uh, achievements of the children and their social ex uh, ex experience, uh, they thought that uh, the uh, that the reform does not uh, uh, does not affect it uh, neither in the negative way or in the positive way. This is what most of the subjects of the survey um, uh, argued. So the Rama findings, as well as the state controller's review findings, uh, put a question mark over this co co uh, relationship between this connection between accessibility and quality. And now I will sum up uh, what I had to say about this connection. We can see this phenomenon of putting an emphasis of accessibility over quality in the zero or, or birth to three uh, educa education system and the three to six education system. And I must say that the exceptions to this rule is the population of Arab children where the accessibility to educational systems in those uh, two gr uh, um, age groups is low. In the daycare center, only two or three percent of the daycare centers and seven percent of the children, Arab children, I mean, go to uh, visit to, to these um, uh, uh, daycare centers. And uh, as for the uh, demand for uh, preschool education, the participation rate is m uh, much uh, lower than uh, in the than they are in the Jewish uh, uh, sector, and this is a poor, a weakened uh, population. Fifty percent of the children are poor. Uh, I have to think about this topic in terms of looking. Uh, on the positive side as well. In 2011, we see a minor change in addition of half uh, a, uh, an assistant in the daycare centers, but it's very significant. It expresses the fact that the policymakers do understand the uh, importance of uh, improving the regulation or the standardization. And uh, then uh, the second assistant reform, which added another assistant to the age group of three to four where the, when there are more than 30 children. What I would like to say is the reform of the second assistant doesn't change two very significant quality parameters that I've mentioned before. No change concerning the the kindergarten teachers, the professional uh, people that uh, work with the children, and it also doesn't change the a the size of the group, which is also a very significant variable in terms of the structural quality. So we have to take that in consideration as well. A, a few highlights uh, from the study. I try to make generalizations. I hope they are not too general, too rough. First of all, even when you uh, look at all the intervention uh, attempts, the best predictor, the most significant predictor of achievements of good development of the children is the uh, socioeconomic situation of their parents. And that is what uh, uh, Noah's uh, presentation has clarified uh, very well. Um, having said that, uh, children from weakened uh, uh, 
uh, families, when we have quality-based uh, intervention programs, uh, make the most profit of it. The, the, weak, uh, the, the weakest are going to enjoy these uh, programs. Something very uh, significant that in a minute I'm going to return to is the importance of heterogeneous uh, settings for the development of the children. If we take only weak uh, children and give uh, the program a very intense uh, uh, involvement, it's going to be less efficient uh, than if they are in heterogeneous groups because children look from children, learn from children, not less than they learn from the kindergarten teacher. Another significant point is that The effects of intervention programs quite often are uh, visible on a short range uh, uh, period, uh, a, a year, for example, in terms of the ability to bridge the gaps. But quite often, if the program does not uh, uh, is not being implemented on a long-term basis, the differences are going to remain, which means that education in early in the uh, in early childhood is not a panacea if we put all our uh, uh, um, resources into these uh, age groups it's not going to work if we leave them behind afterwards a little bit about the universal policy vis-a-vis -vis a progressive uh, policy in general in daycare centers there is no universal policy. We see the daycare centers cater to 23% of the population. They don't uh, have, a, they don't intend to encompass the entire population. And a part of the um, of the objection that the Ministry of Education has to having daycare part of the ministry is that it is not what they strive to do. But within this 23%, the policy is not progressive. Perhaps that is a good thing, because daycare centers because their ex ex the acceptance to them uh, has is conditioned upon parents working, it is caters to a heterogeneous population. They only take those uh, whose income per capita is less than 5,100 shekel. Those who have a, such an income are being supported and their daycare centers are subsidized. So we're not talking about a population that is disadvantaged necessarily. The policy, at least over the last decade or so, uh, has become a little more progressive. What we see on this graph here, on this diagram here, is the number of children that are being highly subsidized, which means that the uh, income per capita in these families is less than 2,000 shekels, compared to those who are less subsidized. I can say also in parentheses that they did this change, but they also raised the ceiling at the same time as for the families that are being subsidized. If in the past families whose income per capita was were 5,100, they didn't get subsidized, now they do get subsidized. So the subsidies are now being given to uh, the uh, stronger populations as well. A little bit about universality versus progressivity in the uh, preschool education. There are several reforms that are interesting to look at. The first reform is the long school day reform. The law on long school days was legislated in 1997 and it aimed to uh, provide equal opportunity the law says that it wants to give equal opportunity to every child in the country. So that definitely is an aim set by this law. Uh, but over the years, this uh, law was treated as something that is supposed to be universal and should apply eventually to all children in the country. The Trachtenberg Committee recommendations also said that this long school day law should be applied to all children in Israel and to finance it progressively meaning that stronger authorities will pay more. And this law, like many others, has not been implemented fully to date, and therefore the policy is still mostly progressive. Again, New Horizon. We see that what they're doing is extending the school day in all kindergartens. 
the requirements or, uh, for improving equality for improving quality is for all kindergartens so that is both universal and also means that access is very high in the Ministry of Education and it's interesting to see the second aid reform I'm pretty sure that many of you have seen or have been exposed to this in the media Minister Bennett wanted the financing of the second aid reform to be progressive meaning that stronger local authorities will pay 50% of uh, this uh, uh, of the cost of the second aid and the uh, government will pay the other half and the central authority the central government the uh, center was uh, very opposed to this and they didn't want the local authorities that were stronger to pay more and so the agreement eventually said that the government will pay 100% of the cost for the weaker local authorities and 80% uh, in the stronger local authorities. So the agreement at the end of the day pretty much made this progressive move uh, virtually uh, invalid. And also the free education for three and four year olds law for many years children in the smaller clusters uh, you enjoyed such a education uh, free of charge and now resources have been transferred and they made a universal step and allowed all children to enjoy free education so what did we learn here well first of all we learned that there is a view adopted by policymakers in Israel that links quality and access. We will give more hours, we will also improve the quality. We see this also in the long day, long school day, where children are in uh, daycare centers or in other s uh, settings for longer hours, but also aims that speak of decreasing or um, minimizing gaps. And these policies requires thought due to the findings of this study whereby in terms of the quality or what the children gain from these settings it seems that longer days don't give us much more gain and even perhaps lead to some damages another matter we should be thinking about and being aw be aware of is the high tendency of the education system towards universality this has some advantages of course but in this tension between the desire to cater to the more disadvantaged populations versus the stronger ones, we are in fact bringing about a, a an education system that caters to all. I have a lot more to say, but I will just say one last thing that again brings me back to, um, to Noah's uh, opening words. Having said all of this, and I assume that the main message speaks about let's talk about quality and not only access, I must sort of say as a side comment that studies today that link poverty and the socioeconomic status of parents to the success of their children also put this statement uh, under a question mark. There's now a series of studies being conducted in the United States and it shows that in the earlier ages there's also a difference in the structure of the brain between children who come from poor families and children who come from stronger families. And this statement uh, is, has to do with correlation. They said, uh, Dr. Uh, Jaffe said that uh, the difference is not uh, seen at, at birth, but it is seen at the age of three. And so what we may conclude is that we as educators who look at education policy must look at this uh, more comprehensively because this is a complex problem and it may be that access that I talked about as a source of that may be problematic and allows for uh, parents to be employed to work and to have these families go above the poverty line and in fact prevent the situation of um, the financial 
the stress and all the disadvantages that follow, it's also something that needs to be taken into consideration when we look at this entire package called early childhood education. And a complex problem should also be uh, solved in an elaborate way. And we'll end here.